What's up guys? Welcome back to WX Garage. So, um, this video is probably some, something that um, you guys have been waiting for quite some time. Today we are going to be going over pretty much uh, my experiences with the car, uh, how it feels with the new front mount intercooler from Grimspeed. Uh, if you guys haven't seen that video, the install video, I'm gonna put it up in the corner here. But uh, overall, I am so, so happy with the car. Um, this is going to be a bit of a talking head video, but uh, I do have quite a few driving clips from the new GoPro, so I'm going to put those in here. Um, unfortunately, you know, I still need to improve my setup for audio. Um, I'm still waiting on a suction cup mount to come in for, for the GoPro, but guys, this car sounds so freaking good. It it really does. I I can't explain it. Uh, it has to be one of those things in person. Um, the intake noises sound amazing. They're just amplified by the new front mount. Um, the exhaust note. Um, again, this is not an aggressive exhaust setup at all. But that being said, it still, when you're on throttle, sounds so, so good. And uh, when you're just cruising, nice, even, good, quality uh, tone. Um, well, on that topic, a lot of people, um, that's something that a lot of people don't really understand um, when they're looking at different exhaust setups. The main thing people are looking at is um, <clears throat> how they compare in terms of volume, but not many people talk about the quality, the sound quality that comes out. Um, personally, I think that anything without a resonator, it just sounds terrible. If that's, that, that's for the FA platform, that's for the, the Subaru platform in general, EJ as well. Um, if, you're, if you want rasp, I just think it doesn't sound good, but regardless. Um, let me throw a couple clips in right here for you guys, just split this up. Uh, talk about um, how the car sounds, do a couple pulls, and then uh, my reactions to it, so. It should be good. Let's see how this, uh, how this audio quality sounds. Cold start. Uh, and she sounds really good. Um, I took some clips with the, uh, the mount over my shoulder here, and I think this spot right here is just a bit too windy uh, for the, the audio quality to really come through. So we're still working out the, uh, the issues here, but I think this spot will, will capture a lot of this, uh, the sound that I hear from the exhaust and from the intake and everything really, really well. So let's go for a quick drive and uh, let's see how it sounds.
So now that you guys have heard that and seen that, um, how, what do I think about the car in general now? Um, it's really hard to know the exact amount of power made because I did an e-tune. I'm gonna touch on that a little bit later in the video. Um, but essentially, the other weird thing about this is that, you know, we're at altitude, so there is some differences. Um, just because there's less oxygen in the air. Um, because I'm running ethanol, because I'm running a tur I have a turbocharged car, um, the difference between at altitude and at sea level, um, the difference is negligible. Usually there's a small difference, but because um, of those things, um, you can run higher boost pressures to achieve the same amount of oxygen that you would have at lower uh, sea, at lower altitudes at sea level, so if that makes sense. So um, before I did this e-tune, um, before um, when I was just had the, the base flex fuel tune from Bren Tuning, when I moved out here, the car was able to compensate to a certain degree by doing AFR learning, um, but the car just wasn't designed or the, the, the tune on the car wasn't designed to be operated at 5,000 feet, which is where I'm at now. So uh, one thing they did as part of the e-tune process was adjust the car for the altitude. And then the other part of it was adjusting the tune for the added front mount. Um, you can run the front mount without a tune, without really any issues, um, but you're not going to see um, any of the added benefits from the tune um, or, or from the front mount without getting a tune on it first. So that being said, all in all, my guess, my best guess is that this car is making somewhere between 405 to 410 to the wheels um, at, you know, basically my max ethanol content, which is E65, E60. So right around there, I have no doubt in my mind that this car is making over 400 wheel. Um, it feels amazing. That power that I'm talking about is really not there until the top end. And that's when you know you have a well-tuned car. If you have a car that has, you know, especially on Subarus, any kind of turbocharged vehicle, from the factory, that power curve, it drops off after 5,000 RPM, it really does. And uh, the way that these cars are tuned now, if you shift that torque peak from the earlier in the RPM range to later on, you're just adding reliability. Yes, you do have a little bit more of turbo lag. Um, you know, you're not going to get max power at 2000 RPMs, but if you're driving your car that way, if you're too lazy to downshift, that's not really how you should be driving anyways. So, um, cars are amazingly reliable. I haven't had a single damn drop. Um, I've had some, uh, random knock, but that's just Subaru things. Um, the, f the highest knock I've seen was minus four. Um, it didn't affect my dam. It was a one-time knock feedback um, or knock learning value. And uh, I honestly think it was just the rock that came up into the engine bay. I don't think it was anything else. The knock sensors on these cars are just really sensitive. The AC compressor pulley is enough to, to kick, uh, to should throw a knock value onto your access port. So. Basically, if I don't see dam drop, or if I don't see consistent knock feedback showing on the on the AP, I just don't worry about it at all because I, I trust my tune, I trust my tuner. Brent Tuny did an amazing job. Um, and uh, yeah, so the car just feels absolutely amazing. Drivability throughout this entire process has stayed the same. Um, I do have a stage three daily uh, clutch in here from um, South Bend. And uh, it really, it's, it, it's, it's great. It doesn't feel harsh on the, on, you know. Um, it took a little bit of time to get used to the new clutch, but overall, it just feels great. Drivability is amazing, cruising. You know, there's no jerkiness. Everything is super smooth. Um, just shifting gears and everything, it's felt, it feels amazing. Um, 
I do get quite a lot of uh, pops and burble and stuff like that um, when I'm getting off gas or when I'm sh between aggressive shifts. Um, I haven't tried flat foot shifting or launching yet, so I'm going to do both of those in an entire other video um, once I scope out a good place to, to do that. Um, but I am just so, so happy with how this car feels, how it drives. Um, completely random. I don't know if anybody, any of you are really even interested, but um, right now I'm still getting average around 22 to 24 miles per gallon around town on E60. So around town here, there are a lot of long flat roads where you know you're going 50, 55. So cruising, uh, and, then, and then a mix of you know stop and go, a bunch of stop plates too. So um, really not bad. Uh, miles per gallon with uh, the E60, E55, E65 blend, anywhere in that range. So um, again, just super happy with how this thing turned out. Um, let's talk really quick about the e-tune process in general. Uh, a lot of people on our last videos, they comment down below, you know, they don't really understand how it works. Um, what is an e-tune versus a pro-tune. Um, let, let's just walk through that process. If you're going to get an e-tune done, you're essentially getting a specific tune for your car from a reputable place. Instead of an off-the-shelf, an OTS map like you'd get from MA Performance or Cobb or someone like that, uh, and there are e-tuners that, that have off-the-shelf tunes. I know Ambot makes some of those and they're great. Um, an e-tune is different because they are actually changing the values in the table of your ECU, in your, uh, your car's computer, the way it handles boosts, the way it handles timing, uh, AFRs, etc. cetera. Um, it's creating a specific tune for your specific car based on what data you send to them. So usually an e-tune process is you reach out to the tuner, you purchase on their website, you email them, you figure out what that, you know, how you actually purchase the tune. And once you do that, they'll send you a list of instructions. Huge thing is there, read all the way through. Usually they have a really solid frequently asked questions list. Uh, Brand Tuning sent this awesome, you know, long, I think it was like eight, eight page PDF um, where they explain the entire process. Um, if you read all the way through, then you're gonna have the most information that you can get and uh, you're gonna learn a lot. So for, for Bren Tuning and in the past I did an E-Tune van bot, essentially they'll, they'll, you'll tell them the parts on the car and they'll send you what they call their base map, which is um, essentially a tune that they think is going to be safe and reliable and something to build off of. So they'll send it to you, you plug your AP, your access port into the computer, you load the map onto the access port, and then you take that access port off the computer and you put it on the car. Once you're connected to the car, you flash that new base map onto the car, and then you do your driving logs. Uh, they asked for three different kinds of logs, uh, idling for about uh, two minutes, um, one log, um, just cruising around town, stop and go traffic, et cetera. You know, getting up, not all the way into power, but you know, around up until 4,000 RPM, and then coming back down, just normal driving around town. And then the last one is a full pull uh, from two, from essentially 30 miles per hour in third gear on our cars. So that's at 2,000 RPM, all the way to red line. So um, very simple. Um, to, to start logging, you just press the center button on your gauge menu. Um, while looking at your gauge screen on the AP, you just press the center button and it'll start logging. It'll show these little blue dots flashing up the screen and that'll show you that it's actually logging. So once those three logs are done, all you do is you take your AP back to your computer, connect it, and then you use uh, Cobb, the, the access port tuner program, on your desktop to extract those files, which are just TXT files. And you send those logs to the, as, as those TXT files in an email back to your tuner. They'll take a look and they'll say, oh, I think maybe this needs adjusting, whatever. 
and then it'll send you an updated map. And then from there, you repeat the process. Um, with, for this last one, it took literally just one iteration um, and uh, or two iterations, essentially. They sent me the base, uh, the new base map, and then they sent me the updated one and I sent them the logs from the updated one and they said, everything looks great, have fun with the car. So with the Ambot one, it took a little bit longer. Um, I, we went back and forth, um, I think it was like five or six different logs or, or five or six different maps that I had to try out to take it, you know, to get them to that point, um, to get the car to that point where it was, it was good. Um, but because I had done the Pro Tune, uh, the Dino Tune with Bren Tuning before coming out here, and they were just adjusting for altitude and for the added front mountain dew cooler, um, the process was very simple, and they already had like a very good base level understanding of the car. So, yeah, um, absolutely. If you guys are in uh, the Northeast, please hit up Bren Tuning. They do an amazing job. Um, super transparent about everything. Um, they know what they're doing. Uh, if you are elsewhere, they do offer their e-tuning services and, and super smooth. Um, just make sure you pay attention to the instructions and everything like that. So uh, that's, that's all I have for you guys today. Um, if you made it this far, um, I know a lot of you are gonna ask what is left to do on this car. Um, for basically at this point, I'm full bolt-on except for, uh, I have the stock VPV, the bypass valve. Um, and a lot of tuners actually prefer that. So I'll probably might stick with that. We'll, we might add the cob one later on down the line. I don't know. Um, I could do headers. I could do uh, an aftermarket turbo. And that's, 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 those are the only things left that I could possibly do other than, um, I mean, I could do a built block, but that is something that I will be doing on a project car. And I haven't talked to you guys about that yet, but that is coming soon. Um, yeah, I'll make a, a separate video on, on the new project car that's coming. Um, it's still up here. I haven't bought anything yet, but it's uh, I am actively searching for this car. So uh, that you guys will probably you I may have mentioned it before, but she is covered in dirt from rain the other day, so I'm gonna go take her for a quick wash and uh, it's beautiful, the heat just broke out here, so it's finally like in the mid 70s, low 80s, and it just feels amazing. So I'm gonna take her for a ride, um, enjoy her. So um, thank you guys so much for watching. As for the rest of the outside of the car, I have tons of stuff to do still. Um, I still have to do uh, a new front lip. Uh, I might be doing a body kit uh, over fenders or a wide body, uh, rear diffuser, um, splitter. There is a ton I can still do on this car and I will be doing. Um, and I do have a couple parts already coming in from a couple other uh, companies. So um, <clears throat> very excited and uh, I'm just so happy with how this car came out. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you next week. Peace.